Hello girls, we shall continue with the chapter The Blue Bead written by Nora Burke. Kindly keep your textbooks ready on page 95. So till yesterday we had studied that Sibia, who is the main character in the story Blue Bead, she is a 12 year old girl, 12 year old skinny girl and she lives in extreme poverty and she had never owned anything in her life except a rag. And she had never owned even one Anna, not a pie, not a pie, even to buy, say, a handful of blown glass beads from that stall in the bazaar where they were piled like stars. So she, whenever she used to go to the market, she was always drawn to this shop where these uh, blown glass beads were decorated or you can say they were piled like stars or one of the thin glass bangles that the man kept on a stick. And you could choose which color you would have. So just like any other young girl, Sibia, who is 12 years of age, she had a great desire to own these colorful bangles and she was always attracted. She was always drawn to the shop. Uh, she used to stand in front of the shop and she used to admire these colorful bangles, which the man had beautifully decorated on a stick. But she knew what finery was though. She had been with her parents and brothers all through the jungle to the little town at the railhead where there was this bazaar. So this bazaar was situated in the little town, town at the railhead. And they had walked through all the milling people. Milling people means people coming and going in large numbers and the dogs and the monkeys which were full of fleas. The idle, idling, gossiping, bargaining, humanity, spitting beetle juice. So all these adjective girls, these uh, describe a typical Indian market or you can say typical Indian people. So this is a very common scene which we witness in the Indian markets. Okay, the gossiping, the bargaining people and occasionally we can even see them spitting beetle, beetle or pan juice. And she could even hear the bell of a sacred bull clonking as he lumped along through the dust and hubbub. Remember this was a... A small town market so maybe the roads were not pakka roads the roads were kacha roads and these bulls when they used to pass from there they used to they used to go through a lot of dust she had paused amazed before the sweet meat stall to gaze at the brilliant honey confections abuzz with dust and flies so next shop uh, you can say she the next pause, her next pause is right in front of a, a sweet shop and she is gazing, gazing means she is staring at the brilliant honey confections abuzz with dust and flies. We know that um, how sweets, all of us know that how sweets, they attract flies and insects and here in this case girls, we see that uh, this particular sweet shop in the town market where the shopkeepers, okay, in the small towns and all, when you go to villages and all, the shopkeepers are not very concerned about the hygiene. So you can imagine how these sweets must be a buzz with all dust and flies. They smelled wonderful above the smells of drains and humanity and the cheap cigarettes. So there was a mixture of different kinds of smells, say, the smell of the drains and the perspiration of the people and the cheap or the beady or the cigarette smell. So there was a variety of smell. At home, she sometimes tasted wild honey or crunched the syrup of a stalk of a sugar cane. But these sweets were green and magenta. So these, uh, this was something, maybe this, this colorful uh, sweets, it was a luxury for Sibia who had never seen never ever seen before in a life such colorful uh, sweets sweets of green color magenta color or cream color so this was something new for her so she pauses in front of this uh, sweet shop and she is admiring all these brilliant color sweets <laughs> 